Hi, Carol here, and a warm welcome to my craft room. Well, today we're going to switch gears, and I'm going to do a watercolor painting. I needed some R and R today, this morning, and I find watercoloring so relaxing. And I thought I would take you through a beginner painting. This is a painting that you can do. I'm using the Majestic uh, 15 long uh, handle brushes. It comes in a set. I'll put it in the description box. And um, I will go through the products after I show you just a few things here. I'm going to take my 3 inch brush. Any brush will do. You're just going to give it a mild soak on the outside, of, just like this, the outside of your watercolor paper. I've got it leaned up against um, a frame stand that I have for uh, displaying things. It was perfect. And um, I'm going to do a watercolor of the two things we all struggle with if we like to paint, and that is poofy clouds, fluffy clouds, and frothy uh, waves. They're the two things that if you watch any wonderful artists on uh, YouTube, I used to watch Bob Ross all the time, all the time. <laughs> I couldn't get enough of Bob Ross. As a matter of fact, my girlfriend calls me, now she calls me Bob Ross of Lace. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Yeah, so if she talks to me, she says, Hi, Bob. And I say, I call her Lucy, and that's not her name. But anyway, I thought that was really funny. But I really do. I find Bob Ross relaxing. And if you're a beginner painter, as I am here, I just do it for relaxation you will enjoy this. So let's get some water down on your watercolor paper, whatever you use. Then I'll go through the colors that I put on my palette. Now this palette here is the Masterson uh, palette. It's the Stay Wet Handy palette, they call it. And you get to have, I'll show you pictures of it, of how you keep your uh, watercolors. This is Liquitex. Here's the, pit, the finished picture. Here's the liquid text. You can get these at Michael's in this set. And this is how I laid them out and how I mixed them. Here's the Strathmore watercolor 11 by 15 paper. Here's the handy palette acrylic paper sheets that you put over top of the Stay Wet sponge. That It has all the instructions. You can get them in large sheets like this or the uh, 8.5 by 7. And that's what I use right here. Then it has a lid and it keeps them moist all the time. So the colors that I'm using are, is cadmium yellow, lemon yellow, which I've mixed together right here. You're just going to slop some on going just to get an undertone on the water there. Uh, back and forth, back and forth, up and down on the edges. You just need a little bit of this. Cadmium yellow mixed with lemon yellow. I've got um, burnt sienna, alizarin crimson. Cerulean blue, primary blue, cadmium red, red oxide, neutral gray, and titanium white. That's what I'm using in the palette, which I mix together. So now I'm taking together some, yes, and it's wet. You're taking some of your cadmium red, your uh, alizarin crimson, and your burnt sienna, mixing them up with a little bit of primary blue, and you're just going to get, um, I want to keep that area right there in the middle, a, a pale yellow blue. That's why I took it out. I wanted to have the blue on there, but uh, you'll see why. You want to go in on the sides, just mix up some blue. You don't have to, you know, when you add the blue to the yellow, you're obviously going to get some of the beautiful green, which is like an aquamarine green that you'll see later on we're going to use on the bottom of our water. Pick up some of your straight blues like your um, uh, cadmium blue or cerulean blue and your primary blue mixed together and on the sides I'd say two-thirds up bring it forward to the center there where you leave a space of the yellow for sun rays. Then you want the blue sky to come in from both angles and isn't that easy, Pete? You can't get any easier than this. Look at that. You just want to bring it in on all sides. And this is going to give you a really nice water 
grab it from the sides. I sped it up only one speed cycle uh, so that, you know, it wasn't an hour long because truly this is a beginner level painting. I have this resting on an old towel on my island that I work on and I have a small towel to the left of me. The paper towels I'm going to take out, you're just going to circular, you can see how I twist it to get the cloud base. This is only the base. I want to see where I want my clouds. What's really nice about this, you have a wet layer so you can take off uh, as much of the base as possible. You can drag your paper towel on all angles to get those wonderful rays. That's all I wanted. And I'm telling you, this is so relaxing. It, it's an, it didn't take me but a half an hour uh, to seriously, um, you know, it's the cleanup in that that takes <laughs> but longer. But this is truly a, rela a crafter's dream of relaxation is to watercolor. And um, this is not a masterpiece going up anywhere. I just wanted to show you how you can easily make a wonderful painting that you'd be proud to hang up. Um, what I'm doing here is I'm grabbing some uh, straight water onto my sponge and I'm twisting it. I want to see how far I want these clouds to come in. And then we'll do some overtones over top with the uh, titanium white. We'll add some of the neutral grays and the primary blue undertone together. And uh, we'll do that later. So here I am taking the two blues. So that's the cerulean blue and the primary blue. And uh, some water on my brush. And I'm still working with the two, I'm working with the two inch brush now. And um, I'm concentrating on having those uh, rays coming down and the water coming in with a darker. On the lower third, I want it to have a darker blue forced in towards the center. Then I'm going to take some of the, uh, no, I'm sorry, the yellow, the cadmium yellow on my brush, twist it again to get those clouds back in. And this is only for, um, you just want to see where you want the placement. That's what I'm doing here. I, it, it shows me uh, later on whether I want to keep this many clouds or I want to run my brush across. And you want to, if you want to force it into the paper, you really can. Um, you pick up a little bit of water like I'm doing there and some of the titanium white on the end of your paper towel and twist it into the paper. You want to have some, uh, just a little bit of your cadmium red and uh, then you can take your brush lightly with some water and brush over it. Remember how Bob Ross used to do that? Just a, a clean brush and whatever direction you want in your painting, go over top and it will just take out some of the errors that you don't want there, like that blob right there of the red, and take a clean brush and swipe it out. And then you, you're just having direction here. You can just see, okay, how many clouds do I want to have? And um, how fluffy do I want them? So here, as you can see, now I am taking out more and more of the blue. It's bringing the undertone of the green hues and the yellow forward. I really like that. I get that uh, center in the, uh, just above the third dark blue on the bottom. And now the titanium white twisted on the end this is what will give you the, the cloud undertones. Then you can grab some of your grays. You can grab a little bit of your red and your, there's the gray. Put the undertone of gray under your cloud. That's the key, get that gray under there. And actually you can get some of the, the blue on your um, paper towel there, twisting it. Some of that bright blue, actually the primary blue would be great, 
and twist it in there so that the clouds will have undertone twists of gray and blue and red and it'll when you twist it you're going to bring out the yellow and the turquoise and you do get the cloud poofiness because if you put gray and blue undertone on the bottom of your paper towel say you've twisted it up and just put a little bit of undertone on there on um, you know on the bottom of the twisted paper towel and then put the white on the top and when you twist it you get the look of two colors in one it's wonderful I want to make sure that I have a deep blue on the bottom where my water froth is going to be and then I want to tap just tap 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 some grays and some blue mixed together and a little bit of red and tap it into the clouds take your curled up paper towel twist it into the white you can even drag it like that and like I said here you just want to have like a mountainous misty look on the um, upper portion just underneath your clouds and because this is a relaxation piece it's not really a slow motion teaching tool it's just like I just want to encourage you if you have watercolor paper even on the front of a card base you could just tone this down to a card base uh, size it would look so pretty and really you're just working with three different sizes of paintbrush a three inch to start here's my two inch and then when I move to the majestic uh, brushes I use a one inch flat and a corner um, brush but we'll get into that in a minute so here I'm just adding kind of like a mountainous range I just want to have it to look more solid up towards the cloud area and right underneath the horizon line is where I'm going to push the water out towards us so I'm going to have the deeper blue towards the um, lower third and then I'm actually going to drag the blues to get that turquoise uh, color on the bottom blue green and red and I'm going here I'm using the one inch brush and I'm just dragging some of the color the deeper colors just you don't even have to worry about it just get your brush and mix together what you think is a nice deep blue color and that's why I like to use the cadmium red the cerulean blue burnt sienna is in there to the left I threw some burnt sienna to deepen it to get it towards more of the black blue tone and now I'm going to work the rays again in the sky I want the blues to stand out but I want the peak of the yellows to just plummet through the clouds so I grabbed some paper towel with some water on the end of it and I'm just dragging it down then I'm going to do the twist motion to get the clouds to separate because I do want to have the undertone of blue sky in there but still hang on to that wonderful look of the sky and the sun coming through the clouds in the center. So that's the look I'm going for. So here I'm just mixing up uh, some deep blues and some bright blues. And I'm just taking my two inch flat brush and I'm pouncing it, as you can see here, to get some of the waves. Uh, nothing spectacular here. We're just pouncing some color you want an open area because this is where the froth on your um, waves are going to take place so you underneath the wave and underneath the froth you want to have some about three tones of blue a deep black blue a mid-tone blue and then maybe some turquoise mixed with the green the yellow and the blue mixed together on your palette play with the colors this is fun 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 play with your colors and uh, I guarantee you you will find this so relaxing and then take a dry brush I will take a dry angle brush like a one inch angle brush and I'll push some of the color out with that now here I'm twisting just like the clouds on top for my water froth to come up 
just go in different areas. Sorry about my arm right there. I'm grabbing my dry brush here. Took it right out. No water on it whatsoever. And I am pouncing. Um, I'm drying up the actual watercolor. And then I'm going to come in and start pouncing some titanium white and gray together. And this is how I'm going to fill up the center of the water, dragging it back and forth. Uh, so that I get this kind of a wavy wave of water, if you can say like that, a wavy wave of water. <laughs> and my friends and subscribers, this is for sheer relaxation. Have fun with your watercolors, whatever watercolors you choose. I chose the Liquitex because they're a cheaper version, but yet they're a nice uh, watercolor base. So here I took the white and I'm pouncing it back and forth. I want the water to look like it's flipping up towards us. And all you have to do with your brush here is just add the white and gray in different areas. Take a dry brush and go back and forth, back and forth. Go over it where you want to drag the color. I want to concentrate on the deep blues underneath the white waves and the turquoise towards the, the uh, horizon line. And you get this um, just a nice relaxing hour of your day, say an hour. And look at that, I'm adding some more of the titanium white mixed together with the gray and the neutral gray. And um, that will help me on the bottom when I drag to get the with a little bit of the uh, um, primary blue and the burnt sienna and mix it going across. It'll give you a beautiful turquoise right here. You find when you're working with uh, colors that you don't necessarily want the same colors on each side. You know, so it looks like you folded your paper in half and it looks so identical from one side to the other. I don't like to have that look. I like to have it really take on a character in itself. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm adding some more of the white going across the clouds and uh, I jump back down because I want to have some deep, deep blue undertones for the froth coming up on the water. I just want to give the illusion that it is flipping over towards you like you're standing there with your feet in the water and nothing turbulent, just a nice, nice edge to the waves and they're just coming into shore. You look out there and the sun is, the rays are coming through the clouds. They're going to meet you on the water kind of like underneath your horizon mountain plane there and uh, you're just working mainly with all of your blues and then when you combine it with your red and yellows you get look at that that glassy look on the bottom uh, where you would stand you get that speckly look towards the right hand side and then you're going to just pounce on some more of the white going out towards the horizon line uh, so that you have a little bit of the froth uh, towards the um, back end of the painting. Add some blue little lines so the water looks like it's going to and fro. Sorry, my camera there is um, yeah, giving me a little problem, but we've got it fixed. And there you have it, my friends. Uh, I hope you'll give this a try. I'm moving my paintbrush here in um, back and forth motion, tapping and back and forth. And then see how when I added the lines coming down in the center, it almost looks like the rays are taking that water and giving it a shadow from the yellow coming down through the clouds and then it shadows itself in blue towards the center. I like that look. And then I'm going to stand back and see if there's anything else in here that I want to uh, add. And um, basically, you're just going to, wherever you want those rays to come in, drag it down. I want to look like more like a lot of rays are coming through the center portion of those clouds. And then I will take some of the blue, uh, swipe it back and forth there on the... Uh, 
underneath portions of the waves and those that I want to keep nice and crisp so the water's coming towards me, I keep them white with a, a gray mixture. I never do anything just white. And we are just about finished, my friends. If you have any questions, please leave it for me in the comment section. And I want to encourage you, if you love to watercolor, uh, and if you're a beginner like I am, I've been uh, watercoloring, you know, off and on most of my life. I, I do it just seriously to relax, nothing more. And uh, here's where you get your puffy clouds. Yes, I want to jump in here. Add your brush. This is my slanted one inch flat brush. It has kind of like a cut on it. And I'm taking it and I am pouncing it right into the upper portions of the uh, gray. You know that gray? See on the right hand side how those clouds look like, oh, they're just so poofy. And when you want to get that dark tone, don't be afraid to put your burnt sienna in with your uh, cerulean blue and mix it together because it gives you that black blue that you can see there. And you actually get that uh, right there on the right, you get that brown, almost like it's rocks inside the waves that are coming up and then pounce your white and gray mix together with the point of your one inch uh, slanted brush, flat brush. And um, if you want a softer look, take your paper towel, twist it back and forth, and you'll get a nice soft cloud. And don't be afraid to take your two inch brush and a little bit of water on it and work it from the top and pull it down to get the rays to come back from the sky looking like the sun is breaking through your clouds it's a wonderful look and then take your dry brush and flick it back and forth to get some of the edges off i like to keep the edges of the titanium white and the neutral gray mixed together i like to keep it on the froth of the water i can, i don't mind uh, uh waving it back and forth on the clouds but you do want to have a bit of texture on those on the water. So have a blessed week. I hope you enjoyed this fast tutorial. And we will see you on the next video, my friends. Take care.